Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the beginning of Module 2, and we're going to work through the first testing problem. So, there's an introduction to Module 2 here. I suggest that you read it. The next thing is going to be an introduction to testing in general. Uh, I would similarly suggest that you read this. Uh, it's going to be helpful to give some context about what the testing problems that you're going to do are sort of related to. And okay, let's jump into assert equal. So um, I am going to be reading the full problem statement out loud. Uh, we're going to start to be sort of circling around the habits that you're going to want to use during your interview. Um, as you may have noticed if you've been watching these videos up till now, there's been a little bit of inconsistency and that's meant to be on purpose because how you get through module one is not necessarily super important. It's just important that you get through it. Um, once you have all of those building blocks, as it were, now it's time for us to start writing all of that into code that sort of forms a cohesive unit. So, write a function called assert equal. It will be a function that takes in three parameters, actual, which is a scalar, and for those of you who are curious, a scalar is just base. Uh, yeah, it's basically just not an array or an object. Um, and should ideally be the result of calling a function you're testing. That's going to make sense in a moment, and which returns a scalar value. Expected it's another one of the parameters, is also a scalar and should be the theoretical result of calling your function or what you expect. So it's like what I actually got from my function, what I expected. And then a test name is not super important for right now, but it's eventually you would write a series of tests that would uh, verify that your function works in various scenarios. And the test name helps you identify those scenarios uh, if they were to all be presented together. So that if it says failed, it would tell you which of the tests failed and that's where the test name comes in. So your function should compare actual and expected values with strict equality, which is the triple equals, then log one of two messages to the console. Uh, in general, the assertion functions will need some kind of code or separate functions to test. For the first four testing problems, we'll provide examples that include functions like multiply by two, and you'll see that down here. Uh, it is not necessary for you to create these functions. Um, mostly we're finishing the last part of code that you would write if you, your entire job was just to write a multiply by two function. The function's already written, now you're going to write a test that verifies that it works. So, we're going to go over to Replit. We're going to scroll to the bottom and skip the sign up. Uh, signing up can be a very good idea because there's lots of things that you can, you can do once you sign up. Um, but I'm not going to because, well, I don't have a really solid reason why I'm not going to. But I'm not. So anyway, we're going to grab the code here and I'm going to walk you through how you should think about an assert equal function, and then eventually we'll return here to complete the function itself. So I'm gonna paste this in there. I'm also gonna go back and I'm gonna grab this assert equal implementation, which is to say not an implementation. I'm gonna grab this, um, what do you call it, stub. And I'm gonna put that at the top. Mm, yeah, we could put it at the top. It actually doesn't matter where you put it necessarily. Um, so we got that, got this. Okay, so here is our assertion function. Maybe we'll make that a little bit bigger. And here's the function that we're testing. This is a call to the function that we're, that we're theoretically testing here. And you can consider this to be something like the actual output of multiply by two. So down here we have this assert equal with output four and the test name is it doubles two to four. Not a great test name. We'll go over test names more as we go. But let, let's work out how we might do this without using assert equal. So I'm going to comment out assert equal. And the reason that we're doing this is we're going to sort of like build assert equal out of necessity as the methods that we use to test multiply by two become slightly more complicated. So the first one, which you saw a lot during module one, is we console.log the output and should say something like should log four to the console. So if we run this, we see that four was logged to the console. So with all of this, we can assume now that our test works, where our multiply by two function works correctly as it should. Now, let's say they were not completely aware that four is what's supposed to come out here. In fact, we can do that by adding a couple more examples. So we're gonna copy and paste this below. So there's three of these. Now, variable output is gonna get reassigned each time here. So the console.log output is only gonna to refer to the output that was defined above it, which is kind of nice. So we'll do multiply by two for three, and multiply by two for, let's say, negative eight. So if we run this, we get four, six, and 16. Then we can go back and determine that, okay, yeah, this should returns uh, six and should log six to the console, and this one should do negative 16, and it should log negative 16 to the console. And you can already see how this is starting to become a little bit difficult to parse. We have to check each one of these individual values. And so what we might do 
instead of all this would be instead of just console logging the output, let's console log output is equal to what we think it should be. And in this case, rather than seeing a number outputted there, we're going to see uh, an actual true or false. So the answer, do my tests all pass? I would set up the test like this, and then I'm going to run. It's going to say true, 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 so I can verify that I have now passed all of my tests. All we are going to do, and I'm going to reduce this back down to just one of these, but all we're going to do is organize console.log messages to work on a condition. So what we want is if it's true that output is equal to what we think it should be, we want to log something like passed. So if output and expected result match log passed to the console and then otherwise we need to think about what it is that we'd want to see at this point. We want to log failed or something like that to let us know that we failed it. We'd also want to log the test name so that we can identify which of the tests failed. At that point we're probably going to want to know what the expected value was and what the actual value returned from the function was. Which is a complicated way of saying if it fails we want to know which section of the uh, test failed, meaning like what part of the function that we assumed was going to work one way doesn't work that way. And we get that by the test name. What was the actual value that our function returned and what was our test set up to expect it to return? So if we want to do that we could just say something like if output is equal to 4, console.log passed. Else, and there are easier ways to do what I'm about to do in terms of interpolating uh, variables into a mess, into a, uh, what do you call it, into an output message, a string. But we're going to do the mm, old fashioned way. Anyway, we're going to do it like this. We want to say failed plus the test name, we're going to wrap that in brackets so we know that that's the test name. We're going to tell the person looking at the console output, which is theoretically us, we expected, and then we're going to interpolate the expected value. And then we would want to say comma, but got, and then we're going to add in the actual value. Now in terms of uh, actual and expected, we did skip a step, step, because theoretically this would just be four, so we'll put this in as four. But what we're going to do is we're going to create two variables. We're going to say variable actual is equal to the output that came from the function. And again, this is kind of verbose, but we're moving towards this assert equal with actual and expected. So that's the reason we're doing it that way. Then we're going to say variable expected is equal to four. And then we're going to say variable test name is equal to it doubles two to four. Now, if actual is equal to expected, console.log passed. Otherwise, console.log failed, tell us the test name, tell us what we expected, and tell us what we got. So, I think this should work if we just run it, and if it does, it's just gonna say passed. And it says true and passed because, because of this. So, let's go ahead and comment this out so it's not saying true. We'll have it say passed because that's what we want. Awesome. All we are going to do at this point now is wrap all of this into a function. These are the variables that we're using in the function, so those are going to be our um, parameters. And this is the contents of the function, so this will be the definition inside of the body of the function. So I don't know if this is going to be too complicated or not, but I'm just going to copy this and paste it inside of here. I'm going to line up my spacing so that this is nice and organized. And the reason that that's going to become more and more important is because this uh, interface highlights the brackets. So if I have a curly brace here, sorry, the curly braces. So if I have a curly brace here, it's going to tell me, hey, this is where this one ends. So if you have something like that, it can be relatively easy and code structure is not as important. However, during the interview, it's not likely that you will have that. So you want to make sure that if you have an approach, you maintain consistency for that approach. Later on, we're going to introduce a code style guide and some sample code structure, but essentially, we're just doing indent to two spaces and indent subordinate code. And subordinate means this if statement is superior to this console.log statement, and this console.log statement is subordinate to this if statement. If this if statement does not return true, this is never going to happen. And the same idea for all of the code inside of the function, and as you can see, it organizes it in a nice hierarchy for us. 
So now that we've written assert equal, we need to call assert equal. So if you scroll all the way down, that's what was happening on line 36. This is our call to assert equal. So we're going to uncomment that. We're going to get rid of this because we already transplanted it. And then we're going to get rid of our pseudocode. We're going to get rid of this. Variable actual is equal to output. We're just going to call this actual and set it equal to the actual result of multiply by 2. We're going to set up expected to be 4. And test name, well, yeah, let's leave it like that. And so what we can do here is we'll move this up a little bit just so it's all nice in one place. And we'll say actual expected and test name. Now you might be kind of curious as to why we did the same uh, value or same actual like name as the parameters that is not necessary and just to prove it we'll say actual one expected one and test name one so these will be the arguments that we're supplying to this function and up here these are the parameters so we got expected one and test name one so now we have written a function assert equal and we're going to use that to verify that multiply by two works by setting up a test case with an actual result, an expected result, and then a test name in the event that it is a work. So when we run this, it says passed. So we're going to go back over and we're going to grab the failure case, which is just adding one. So this would be a scenario where we have written the function that we're testing incorrectly. So we do that, we run it. Failed, it doubles two to four. We expected four, which is the result we're supposed to get, but we got five. So you can see how this helps us quickly identify where the error is and how we might fix it. So when we called the function, we got one more than we should. So our function has an incorrect formula in it. And if we adjust it, we now pass that test. So we're going to copy the function that we've created. We're going to return back to assert equal. We're going to paste it in there. And then we're going to run our tests. Oh no, did I do this wrong? I wrote the test for this, so it's likely that this is my fault that this isn't saying that it, pay attention to the exact. Oh, all right, fine. Okay, so now what they're saying is, is that, let's look at the exact failure message here. Um, this is funny, because I actually wrote this test and I wrote it thinking that it would be good for people to come across this, but now that I've come across this, I might change this to make it a little bit less specific. But in the event that I don't, what you should know is that what this is expecting is it wants these quotes. It wants us to put quotes around the expected and the actual value. And there's reasons why that might be a good idea, but for the most part, that's the only thing missing. So if we come over here, you'll notice that this is where the expected value is. So we want to put quotes inside of the string before and after it. And similarly, we want to put quotes before and after actual. So we'll do plus and then some quotes and then a double quote inside of there, so that there are quotes before and after actual and expected. So let's run the test, and they're correct. Okay, so <clears throat> it is very likely that I will adjust that just so that it doesn't uh, be that, that finicky. Um, if I don't, you're going to want to keep in mind that special adherence is often paid towards very specific outputs for code, so mm, not really sure which one of those you guys are gonna see, but the rest of the material that we just went over with the idea of building the assertion function directly and organizing our thoughts around why it works that way are all important, so I'm probably gonna leave this video up. If the tests are less specific when you see this problem, um, congratulations. If you want to make the tests more specific, you are probably out of luck. But in any case, what this should show you is that we now have a way to t basically recreate what's going on down here for ourselves in the same way that we create our functions previously, that we've been creating our functions. So with all of that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.